<laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. Uh, what do you think, Ariel? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Yeah. So thank you to the moderator and to the OTC team. And good morning to over 100 travel executives, travel suppliers, travel tech investors, founders who chose to join us today. This event is also broadcasted on our Group 11 social media page and also OTC's uh, social media page. So I expect we'll have hundreds of people tuning in today to get some perspective on the US and global economy in general, and, and of course, the corporate travel market in particular. My name is Dobby Francis, and I'm the founding partner of Group 11. Group 11 is a top decile performing venture capital fund. And over the past few years, we've been an early and large backer of category defining companies such as Next Insurance, Tipalti, Sunbeat, Homelight, and of course, our crown jewel, Trip Actions where we've been amongst the first investors in the company and to this very day are amongst the largest investors in the company. So this is just to give you context on how Ariel and I know one another. And with that, let's get started, shall we? Ariel, ready? Let's do it. All right, so you remember all this practice that we've done prior to the session when <laughs> you know, your marketing team sent me the questions, you know, Greg and Megan, and you and I reviewed them together and we said they're really cool and we should use them. Yes. So I think, I think you know, that's not gonna happen today. No, 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 my friend. <laughs> Not at all. You so know, now we are in an uncharted, uh, uncharted territory like these times. <laughs> <laughs> with the COVID era, this is, this is exactly it. So, so with that, uh, let's, let's start basically with basic questions and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll kick things into high gear and some, you know, some interesting questions later on. But sure. can you tell us a little bit about uh, Trip Actions yourself and how Trip Actions came about? Yeah, sure. So uh, I know that a lot of the, of the audience is actually part of the travel industry, uh, you know, whether are buyers and, uh, and uh, partners and competitors that they I'm sure that you know some about trip actions, but it's actually very simple. It's a corporate uh, t and solution. Uh, we handle uh, your uh, bookings. It's super, super easy to book your trip through us. Uh, then uh, while you're on the road, which obviously right now not a, lo a lot of people are on the road, but on normal times, while you're on the road, we are supporting you proactively. So if something happens, we will help you sleep. Uh, and for the companies, uh, I think we are hearing some dogs in the oh background. My God. <laughs> <laughs> and for the companies, uh, we're actually uh, letting the travel uh, team, uh, they can see the expenses, they can see uh, how people are spending the money, where their employees are, which is very, very important from a safety perspective and so on. And recently we added an expense uh, model to the, to the solution. So now we have the entire stack travel, expense, and the travel management capabilities around it. Got it. So uh, I hate talking about this COVID thing, but I have, to, I have to start with a COVID question, okay? And then we can talk about some other stuff and uh, yeah. you know, some, some interesting things. But, you know, yeah, obviously, you know, COVID-19 has huge impact on, on, on global economy. We have various industries that came to a halt, including the travel industry, the hotel industry, to name, to name a few. Tens of millions of people are unemployed in the Americas and the number is growing by, by the week. You know, how are you um, managing this situation? And, and maybe if you can do, like, give us the timeline. Like, at what moment did you understand that COVID-19 is going to be a big issue for Trip Actions? And what have you done since then? And what are you planning for the future? Yeah, you know, maybe it's also a good, uh, a good time to think about why we even started Trip Actions. And then it leads to these times and COVID and I think also the post-COVID era. Uh, but both me and Elon, my co founder, uh, we started Trip Actions as, uh, as road warriors, as travelers, also as managers, right? So we saw the problem of uh, the way that uh, business travel is being managed from both sides. It, is, it was very, very hard for us to get service to book our trips. And as managers, it was very hard for us to optimize our team's uh, budget. So we saw that problem from both sides. And that's why we've uh, started Trip Actions, basically to fix something for ourselves. And uh, as you probably know, uh, we grew uh, very, very fast. We started Trip Actions four and a half years ago. Uh, our last year's growth rate was 5x year, year over year. So it's probably one of the fastest growth rate in B2B ever. Uh, and then COVID came, right? And when COVID started, you know, um, I actually remember it uh, vividly of uh, where I was that I realized, okay, we need to change our, uh, our uh, thinking here. I was actually, I was landing in Seattle uh, and it was on the same day that the first two cases in the US uh, uh, were diagnosed in Seattle, right? Uh, two people died on that day, came to the hospital and, uh, and basically we discovered that we have COVID in the US. 
And my meeting in Seattle was actually canceled because of it. So I landed in Seattle, turned around and flew back to San Francisco. And while waiting kind of on the tarmac there, I was starting to think, okay, maybe uh, we need to change our strategy uh, for, the next, uh, for the next months, right? And uh, since then, I think it was six months, six weeks ago, uh, we've done a lot of things. Again, getting back to, the, to our mission to really take care of the traveler, to take care of the business travel manager to, that needs to manage the trips. Um, it took us two days into COVID in the US to develop an entire functionality that allowed business travel managers to see where their employees are, but also to connect it to the CDC information and eventually take a decision, can I allow this trip to happen or not? This is something very, very important. Uh, also, they had employees on the go. Should we communicate with them and tell them to get back? Can they get back to the office, right? Let's say that I had an employee in Italy or in China. Can I allow them to even get back to the office? Uh, six weeks ago, people were still working in their offices. So we took the safety approach as the first uh, solution for our customers. And then the second thing that we did, uh, we started to realize we had an assumption that two things will happen to our operations. One, that we'll probably have our entire travel agency, all of the travel agents working from home. And we thought that it will happen in one day like this. So that was assumption number one. And assumption number two was that there will be a day that all travel will get suspended. And both assumptions actually happened. Like we needed to send the entire support team to work from home. And uh, so that was one thing. And the other thing uh, was that we needed to uh, cancel and handle people that were traveling between the US and Europe uh, in one night. In one night, basically, uh, the U.S. Uh, have canceled all of travel between Europe and, uh, and U.S. Um, and uh, we've managed to do it while keeping our call, our wait time in the call center uh, of up to six minutes. That compares to hours and hours that people needed to uh, wait on, a, you know, a, with vendors, airlines, and, and so on. So we're really managing to operate trip actions to the level that our customers and our users were expecting us to, to operate. And we, can, we could do it because of only one reason. And the reason is that we have a real cloud solution here. You can only mobilize a cloud solution to walk from home, to walk from this office, the other office in like one minute. Uh, you cannot do it if you are running, I would say, a fairly uh, traditional travel agency. Uh, and this leads me to, you know, to the post-COVID era. I think that in the post-COVID era, people will think about safety, they'll think about budget, and they will only be able to partner with cloud vendors that are operating their travel stack, uh, because all of the others will collapse in any event that will be similar to COVID. Hmm. So, so can you elaborate kind of like on, on the future? You know, I, I obviously, uh, you and I are friends also on Facebook, so we see the comments people share around the, the desire to travel again, I think number one. Uh, but, but also there is another camp that says that working from home is great and I'm not, I'm not buying into it, okay? <laughs> That's why I'm in the office. <laughs> but but um, what, what do you think will be, you know, if the size of the industry today or pre-COVID is $1.6 trillion uh, a year, corporate travel, right? Between, globally, not only in the Americas. What do you think will be the size of the industry post-COVID? Will it be the same? Will it continue to grow in the same pace? Will it shrink? What do you think? I'll, t I'll tell you what I think. I think that eventually uh, people are uh, social uh, creatures, right? They want to meet face to face. Uh, uh, Zoom or video conferencing is a great, great walk around. All of us are using it now all day long but it misses the, the personal connection. It misses the, this thing that all of us need to close a strategic deal. To, uh, to sell, to hire somebody, uh, to just understand the cultures uh, of everybody else, right? You can definitely do some things uh, through a video conferencing. And I think that all of us are getting training of how much you can do more with video conferencing uh, than you used to, to do. But we're also getting a training that we can sell less, I think, across the board. Part of this is recession, and part of this is related to the phone factor. It's actually really, really hard to close the big deals uh, you know, over a video conferencing without meeting somebody, without being in the same room with somebody. Even what we are doing right now, it's a great workaround, right? We have an opportunity uh, to sit here together and to, uh, and to tell our story. 
right? But I know that when I'm talking in, uh, in conferences, one of the things that really gets me excited is to see the reaction from the audience, right? To actually see the faces, uh, to see how they're reacting. What we are doing right now, I don't have it. It's extremely, extremely uh, limited and a, and a sterile kind of way to communicate. So I think, yes, you'll see more video conferencing, uh, but I think that uh, you'll see a lot of business travel. What exactly would be the numbers? I don't know. Uh, I think that it's very, very hard to focus the future. I do think that only companies only uh, travel vendors, TMCs, that will be able to prove to their um, uh, customers that they can support them uh, no matter what. We, we in Trip Actions, we call it business travel continuity. It's the fact that we can support you even if the entire system is going down. It's the fact that we understand that you will need to be selective on your travel. You will need to decide that it's safe to travel between San Francisco to Seattle, but it's not safe to travel between San Francisco and New York in this date. And we will need to provide you the tools to manage this. Uh, and you'll also need to optimize your budget. You will need to optimize your budget and to allow uh, a trip that is closing a $1 million opportunity to happen and a trip that is closing a $10,000 opportunity not to happen. So I think that only if you'll use a, a, a platform that uses technology, you'll be able to do that. Is there anybody else? I mean, because I've seen a demo of, uh, of, of, the pro of the product in its improved version, the ones that you're working on right now. Mm -hmm. I won't share too much information, I guess, but have you seen anybody else in the market who, who has done something similar to that uh, in, in the competitive landscape? Uh, and um, is the, can they? Because, you know, in some cases, their DNAs, you know, their products that were built on the 80s on different rails. Yeah, you know, there is a, one question. The first question in the Q&A is actually asking about uh, TMC and OBT. They're basically asking, uh, were we at TMC and OBT from the get-go or we started as an, a, as an OBT? OBT. Yeah. And, and it is related. Uh, we understood from the get-go that the major, major problem of the various business travel solutions that are out there is the disconnect between the technology, the online booking tool, the safety tools, you call it duty of care, the, uh, the travel agency itself, the fact that they are coming from different vendors. And we understood that when users are complaining about the experience, when users are going rogue, when they are going and booking outside in a consumer travel solution, they are doing it because of the lack of the integration. You cannot have a consistent experience if you're not controlling the entire stack. Uh, basically the travel agents or the agency and the online booking tool and all of the technology around analyzing data to eventually allow safety. So that's something that was fundamental in our platform. When I've mentioned that we had like one night to cancel all of the flights to, to Europe, you wouldn't be able to do it with a booking tool. Uh, you would be able to do it either with trip actions or by calling to agents and doing it, do it by the phone, which obviously it's extremely not scalable. Um, you could actually go to Twitter on these day, uh, days and see a lot of frustrated companies and travelers at mentioning their travel vendors, their TMCs, and asking a simple question, why I cannot have a button that cancel my, my flight? And you cannot, you can only have it if you have an end-to-end -end solution. Mm -hmm. So going forward, it's the same thing. Uh, we introduced already to the marketplace a COVID map a map that shows you if it's safe to, to fly to a certain uh, place. But then let's say that it's not. Let's say that the situation, the situation has changed. You want to exclude it from the policy. Then maybe it works today, but it will not work in a week from now. And then you would ask the question, okay, if I'm canceling the trip, what, what will I do with the unused tickets? Am I going to get a credit, credit for that or not? And I've just played a lot between what the OBT is doing and the agents are doing. And in complex situations today with a normal TMC, you are just dealing with the agent, okay? That's highly not scalable, very expensive, and takes a lot of time, a lot of efficiency, uh, you know, from your employees. So I think that more than ever, you need to have one solution, one technology to manage the safety of the, your employees, the budget, and the entire experience. Got it. And when you think about such an extreme situation like we have today, I actually, this morning, I read uh, a blog from Richard Branson uh, mm -hmm. Just talking about the difficulties they're facing at Virgin and, you know, uh, asking for a bailout, a government bailout and so on and so forth. And 
And of course, we've seen the case with, uh, with United and many other vendors in the marketplace. In fact, there are 5,500 airlines. So, yeah. no. But when you think about airlines, when you think about hotels, when you think about some of our competitors, uh, uh, when you think of, about some of our partners, do you, do, you, do you see some kind of consolidation that's going to happen over the next, over the next couple of years? Like, what is, what is the future in that respect? I think there are several things. First of all, you need to recognize, I think all of us, and it's kind of related to the question earlier, are people are going to just Zoom or, or uh, we'll get back to travel. Uh, I think travel is infrastructure, right? I don't think that we can, can uh, imagine a world where you don't have airports, where you don't have airlines, where you cannot land and go to an hotel, right? And eventually, if all of the, all of the various vendors in this space, whether are airlines, airports, uh, uh, hotels, all of them will go under, right? We'll miss a pretty big part of our infrastructure, right? If you want to get a hint for that, see what happens to the oil prices two days ago. This is, this is entirely related to the lack of travel, to the lack of usage of cars and so on. So uh, I think we, we are getting a certain preview. I think that governments are smart enough to step in. You see it in the US. Uh, the US government stepped in very forcefully around travel uh, with bailout uh, uh, projects for the entire industry, including, by the way, uh, travel management companies. So I think that uh, governments recognizes it. It is an infrastructure. You will see some consolidation. I think that people that got into these companies, that got into this with a lot of debt, uh, will have a problem, right? Like, like always in life, right? If you, if you don't have enough cash, and you are in a tough situation, you will have a problem. And in some cases, the bailouts will not be enough. So you'll see consolidations, you'll see chapter 11. We, we've seen the version of it in Australia, right? Just uh, yesterday with the, you know, with Virgin Australia and so on. So I think you'll see all of it, but eventually the one thing that I'm certain, uh, you know, in a year from now and two years from now, we will have airports, we will have airlines, we will have hotels. Uh, just because it's a pure infrastructure that all of us needs. Yeah, I think it's a beautiful uh, analogy to use, to use the word infrastructure, right? Because it's, it's essentially what's happening right now. It's like bombing bridges in World War II, right? That's essentially what, what has happened to the, travel, uh, to the travel industry. And I agree that the U.S. government is, is being very proactive uh, in, in, helping, uh, in helping the industry uh, uh, because the barriers to entry to start an airline are so high. Right. Or building the infrastructure that uh, many, many of, um, many of um, our, our competitors and us and, and our peers have built. Okay. Uh, with that, let's talk about the importance of having money. Yeah. Right. So, so Trip Actions, I think, you know, was, was fortunate enough to raise significant amounts of money over a course of seven months, literally, uh, yeah. in, in, two, in two separate financing rounds, plus launching Liquid, literally, a few weeks before, uh, uh, before the crisis uh, stepped, you know, escalated in the Americas. How, so, so you have the amount of money that you have, how are you managing the ship right now? You know, yeah. given that bookings went, went down so dramatically. Yeah, first of all, uh, we, to your point, we were very lucky, fortunate to raise money uh, just before the crisis, a combination of uh, equity funding or D round that we've announced it in June. Um, and, uh, and this was a $250 million uh, round, and also a debt facility that, interestingly enough, we've announced in February, right? So a few weeks before, uh, you know, before the crisis started, of uh, half a billion, right? So we are, we are very fortunate to, to, to do that, and we don't have debt, right? So that's another advantage. Um, so all of this is important, and it helps us to weather the storm. Uh, still, you need to, uh, you know, you need to manage the business. Um, there is a question uh, in the Q&A here around our business model. What, what is our revenue stream? Uh, we are making money on usage. When, uh, when we sign a, a corporate account, uh, we sign them, and then their employees are using us. Only when they use us, we make money, okay? We make one-time booking fee per trip. And this is very, very important. It's actually a bar that we wanted to have to make sure that we are not selling stuff that people are not using. We wanted to make sure that people are use us and the incentives will be aligned, right? Only if people are using us, we are getting paid. Obviously in a situation like this, it changes, uh, it creates a huge pressure on our uh, PNL, right? We have, uh, we, we have very small uh, revenue right now. 
So we did adjustments, right? For example, the entire Trape Actions team was focused on growth. When you focus on growth, you have very big marketing budget, uh, very big uh, recruitment team, and so on. Um, you have a lot of uh, support people. So we needed to uh, do something that is very, very painful generally, but I think for startups, it's even harder, and it's to do layoffs. Uh, and we've done it in, uh, in March. Uh, and it was not because of the lack of cash. It was because you need to be responsible. Uh, I don't think that a travel company right now knows how long this crisis will, ha- uh, will last. And you need to, uh, uh, to, tre- to treat cash, to uh, manage the company through this situation very, very carefully. By the way, it's something that I recommend to any entrepreneur right now, but definitely if you're in the travel space. Yeah. In fact, you were one of the first uh, companies out there that has announced that there's announced layoff way yeah. before many other unicorns have. Right. So uh, and you were criticized for it at first by media. Uh, uh, and, and, and I think, you know, in hindsight, that was a very that was a very wise and responsible move towards other employees and towards your shareholders. Yeah, I, it, it's interesting. I think we have an advantage in our, uh, you know, in our team that all of us have, uh, I think the management, the board have uh, gray hair, right? So it means that actually we've been around in the 99, uh, 2000 uh, crisis and then September 11 and then 08 and then now, right? And, and uh, you know, you, you take something like someone like Ben Horowitz, right? Uh, that managed the company, IPO the company in 01. <laughs> Right, it's 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 crazy, right? And manage a crisis, right? Through through a, I think like seven years until he sold this company to HP. Um, we have the experience in this team to understand how a crisis can look like, and therefore from the get go, we've decided to respond really really fast. We understood that time is extremely important here. So yes, we were the first, uh, one of the first unicorns to do layoffs. Uh, to your point, we got a lot of press around it. And two, three weeks down the road, you see that uh, unfortunately, uh, we are not unique at all with the move that we did. So, so let's talk a little bit more about kind of like culture and ta- talent and culture, right? So you have, a, you have a company and the muscle of the company is 5x growth year over year steady, right? Yep. I mean, we've been, you, you guys have been, have been growing like 16% month over month you know, for as long as we know one another, which is, I don't know, 20, 2015, 2016, yeah. when we first invested. And all of a sudden you put the brakes, you know, rep, you know, bookings drop almost to zero. You lay off, you know, 20% of, uh, of the workforce, whatever the number was. And how do you manage the people who stayed in the company not to lose confidence because people do read news and people are scared by what they're seeing in the news and people don't like uncertainty. And you know what? Top talent also doesn't like uncertainty. So how do you manage the existing workforce, number one, but how do you make sure that you maintain your top talent and you maintain the, the people who contribute to the effort? Yeah, I, I, would start, I would start from something very important. You always, no matter what, uh, when, you need to rally the company around the mission. And it's better that the mission would be the same, right? So in any time. So our mission was to empower the in-person connections, uh, drive businesses and ideas forward. That was something that we've put three, three years ago and, or even four. And it's still relevant now. We believe that, uh, that uh, we will all get back to business, right? If travel uh, will get back, right? And part of this is in order to drive the businesses forward. And this mission was relevant all the time. And it's still relevant. So our team is right now rallying around this mission. How can we get back every business? How can we help our customers to get back to working? So I've mentioned earlier this, uh, what we are calling a route based uh, travel. This is, uh, b- this is developed by our data team. We didn't release it yet, but the concept there is to allow uh, companies to be very, very selective and smart around, uh, the, around approving or not approving travel. This is part of our mission, right? Our employees see a feature like that and think about it as a, yeah, we get it. We understand why we are relevant, uh, why we are still relevant. And in fact, you see it in our metrics. While people are not traveling, we are, uh, March was our second biggest month ever in terms of signing new customers. April looked the same, okay? We are signing new customers, uh, B2B customers that are signing with us that are basically uh, buying into the idea that, that uh, in the day after you need to manage travel in the trip actions way. So the employees sees it. 
And that's what retain talent. What retain talents is the, talent is the ability to rally them around a certain uh, mission. And that's what we do. Will you have some employees leaving it and, uh, and going for a, you know, a safer place? The answer is yes. Uh, but you have it all the time. And there are different types of employees. And uh, the ride of a startup that has ups and downs uh, is, uh, is relevant for some kind of uh, people. And it, it is not to others. And uh, I think that it all comes back to the mission. If the mission is coherent, if people are believing in the mission, you'll have employees, customers, users, no matter how, how hard the times are. Got it. Yeah, it's interesting. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned new, new clients and um, you have signed the, you know, the company's largest customer to date last month. Yeah. Right? And but can you, without mentioning the customer's name, but can you, can you mention what were the reasons that drove them to, uh, to leave their current provider? Yeah, sure. So they are a global customer. They're a, I cannot mention their name yet. We'll do a PR around it, uh, but not right now. And they are a global customer that manages travel for more than $100 million a year. Uh, they are everywhere. Um, and a very complex account, actually. Uh, their solution included several TMCs, one TMC and a booking tool in the US, uh, one TMC in Europe, another one in China, and so on. So very, very complex solution. And even before they thought that it is, it is a mess, right? It is a mess because how do you manage your budget if you are using different TMCs? How do you manage safety if you are using different TMCs and so on? So they knew that it's a mess. Uh, I remember they went and uh, met with their uh, CFO uh, once and uh, she was telling me that her life in the last 15 years around managing travel was a mess. She actually lost uh, hope that someone can come with uh, something better. Uh, COVID made it urgent. They needed to move to one end-to-end -end solution uh, for the safety of their employees. They're actually a consultancy firm. For them, traveling is uh, critical. It's part of their business continuity. They cannot manage the business without traveling. And they needed to have a solution like ours that will show them all the time where their employees are, communicate with their employees, manage the budget uh, smartly, all of the above. And we were the only solution out there, to be honest, that could uh, actually address it. Got it. So, so we have like 10 minutes left. And so let's, let's, let's uh, move to some other interesting questions. You know, I always thought that the trip actions and the likes are kind of like a barometer uh, to how the economy recovers, right? Because the first yeah. thing you'll see is business trips. Mm -hmm. right? People need to generate revenues. You have four, more than 4,000 uh, customers right now. So let's say two separate questions. The, the, the first one is, have you started seeing, I know that some states have opened up recently or starting to open up. Uh, we're seeing some governors making some controversial yeah. decisions, uh, like in Georgia, et cetera. Like, have you started seeing some domestic travel? And what, is the, um, what are the characteristics of the travel, right? Because essentially, there, imagine like a, a, an equation with like 50 variables, because every state has its own behavior. So what are yeah. you seeing in terms of travel? And how are you helping your customers manage uh, the complexity around traveling from one point to another point in different states? Yeah, so first of all, we do see, it's interesting, it's with very, very small numbers, so that, don't take it as a headline, right? But we definitely see uh, in the last uh, week a growth in, a, in, a, in bookings, okay? Which is interesting. Again, very small numbers, uh, but significant growth, right? Compared to the week before and the week before that. And part of this, I think it's actually the exact way that this is going to work governments will make their decisions. So, you know, in the US, it's a little bit more complex, right? You have the government and you have the, uh, you know, the governors. So it's maybe a little bit more complex, but eventually governments will make this, their decisions. But corporations and employees will, make, will also make their decisions. And sometimes it will be ahead of the government and sometimes it would be after based on their business needs. And in a lot of ways, that's actually what we do by uh, coming and saying the government will define if it's uh, okay to leave your house, right? Uh, no one will break the law. But even if uh, it was defined that it is okay to travel or it is okay to leave your house, we see it as a mission to give the tools for the business travel manager or for the CFO to make a, a, an informed decision, informed decision of whether it makes sense to make this trip or not. And we think in a lot of ways, the TripActions uh, platform, it's based on data. We have a lot of data sources. 
it's uh, insights, right, that you draw out of the data that we present to you, and then the actions that you can uh, uh, take on top of this data. Uh, so because the platform is built like that, we believe that we have the tools to provide to the people in the organizations and also the employees to make a decision. Do I want to travel or not? Uh, which comes on top of the government, right? We are not going to tell anybody that they can leave their house. But once government cleared it out, you want to give tools for the companies to make a decision. Got it. All right, let's talk about investments. And um, um, well, let's, let's talk about how do you invest nowadays? It's a, it's a tricky question, right? Because yeah. you know, I, can also, I can also ask you about whether you're fundraising or not and stuff like that. We're seeing companies like Expedia, uh, they just, they just, uh, I'm talking about Expedia as a whole. I'm not talking about yeah. the gens, but Expedia just got some money from Silver Lake. So we're seeing some of those, some, some, some activity going on there. I think Silver Lake also did Airbnb recently, right? Yeah. So, uh, the question goes, you know, to two directions. One, uh, are you looking into acquisitions in the marketplace right now? Mm -hmm. And, and, and two, how are you, uh, investing right now in the growth of the platform? Yeah, investment-wise, so, you know, I've mentioned that we did layoffs, right? But on the other side, we've decided where to focus and where to invest even more. So investments right now, we are actually uh, adding people to our enterprise sales team. Because of everything that I was uh, talking about in the, in the conversation, we see more enterprise customers signing. So we are hiring enterprise salespeople. Uh, we are focusing a lot on our R&D. Um, our R&D right now is super busy on building the safety and expense features that I was talking about, but also accelerating liquid. We actually see really good acceptance uh, of liquid in the marketplace. Liquid is our, our, our expense uh, solution, our payment and expense solution. So in a lot of ways, we are betting on some areas. And as we get feedback uh, around these bets, we are inv investing even more. So that's, uh, that's one area. Uh, regarding fundraising and so on, obviously we are a private company, so I will not comment on this, but I will say something uh, which I think it's, uh, it's what you see in the market right now. I think stronger companies will become stronger, right? Uh, money uh, 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 knows to, to, to find and to flow to the strong companies in the market. And that's what you saw with Airbnb. That's what you saw with Booking Holdings. Uh, they did, uh, I think, a $4 billion debt round. Um, Expedia uh, with Silver Lake and so on. So you'll see this thing happening. And unfortunately, you see the opposite. You'll see the opposite. Uh, companies that had fundamental issues in their business model, such as uh, 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 having low margins, right? Uh, having big debts uh, will have an issue, right? That's what you're going to see in the marketplace. So does it uh, also provide or uh, introduces opportunities in terms of M&A to your question? The answer is yes, but in a lot of ways, getting back to what we've talked about earlier, the need to do business travel. Uh, I think it's very hard to run an M&A activity uh, without meeting people, right? Uh, how do you integrate two companies, right? Uh, how, do you, how do you actually do it? I don't know, right? I, I'm very, very skeptical on the actual mechanisms to do that. So it's almost like to do that, you'll need business travel to get back uh, uh, <laughs> into action. Fascinating. Fascinating. Uh, let's take a question, one last question from the audience because we have five minutes, uh, the moderator yeah. tells me, right? So you want to choose that question, Ariel, yourself? You go, you're gonna, I'm gonna give you the honor. You give me the honor? Okay, so uh, you mentioned an expense tool. Yeah, Elizabeth is asking, okay? Is mm -hmm. it proprietary or you partner with somebody? What about duty of care systems? Is it the same? So the first one was around sales tools? Expense. Oh, expense tools. In our Israeli accent. <laughs> we don't yeah, even yeah, understand yeah. one another. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we've developed our own a payment and expense a solution, but the TripActions platform was always about choice. So we, while we have our own, for example, inventory, we always integrate it to OTAs and to every inventory that is out there to provide it to you. The same with expense. You can work with us with TripActions Liquid. You connect TripActions. You can connect TripActions to other expense management solutions that are out there. So again, it's about choice. But our own Liquid solution, it's our own uh, uh, solution. The same uh, goes to travel. The same goes throughout the uh, you know throughout the platform. Do you have the Liquid card with you? I think I do. You want me to show it? Just show us. Yeah, just how it looks like. Because I'm still waiting for mine. I'm gonna do. Oh, oh you're on the waiting, waiting list. list. <laughs> 
<laughs> you would think that if, if I were to invest so much money, I would get one fast, but I guess customers come first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we prefer the customers, but that's the liquid. Uh, oh, that's the cool. Liquid yeah, yeah. And the cool thing is that it's actually fully integrated to your expense and, uh, and travel uh, activities. Yeah. yeah. So it saves, it's actually saves a lot of time with doing something that, you know, that the accounting departments at large companies and mid-sized companies hate, which is reconciliation of expenses, approving, approving expenses and so on and so forth. In a lot of ways, that was the original uh, value proposition and obviously it's still there. What we are seeing right now in the marketplace, so uh, Liquid in April is actually accelerating and this is something that we've released in February, right? End of February. So very, very new product. Um, what we see in the market right now is that it, it became urgent for a CFO to have a solution like this and here is the reason. Liquid gives the, our customers an ability to see online, to get online visibility to every expense in the company. So unlike the traditional expense management, when you submit uh, receipts uh, in a month or two down the road, you swipe the card, you see all of your expenses, the expense was done magically, right? So you don't need to do anything around expenses. For the CFO, if someone that works from home right now had the mood to, I don't know, uh, buy dinner, or buy a new hardware, or uh, expense stuff that the company doesn't like, right? The CFO can know about this transaction right now and update the policy, reject the transaction. So you get online visibility. In times that money is so important and all of your employees are working from home, this, the online visibility around expenses became urgent. That's why we see acceleration on selling uh, Liquid right ah, now. Interesting. And I know Liquid has some, some other really cool features. It alerts you when a transaction is happening at geolocation. Like let's say you're in New York and there is dinner happening in New Jersey, but you're in Manhattan. So you'll get yeah. the alert. And yeah. Uh, yeah. That's it's a very, point. very sophisticated offering. I, I think it's probably today, uh, you know, if you take trip actions, right, we have the travel solution, we have the safety solution, we have the expense and payment solution. Uh, there is nothing out there, right? There was a question, I think, earlier about the duty of care, how we connected to, to other duty of care's solution. We are, right? And you can have a nice combination between our safety solution uh, to a duty of care solution, and it goes across the board. But at the end of the day, we are the only ones in the marketplace that are offering an end-to-end -end solution, the travel agency, the booking tool, uh, expenses, payments, and safety. Got it. I think with that, we'll end, uh, we'll end our session uh, for the day. Ariel, thank you so much. Thank you so thank much you. to the OPC team, to Greg and Michelle and Megan from uh, TripActions Marketing team, and, uh, and we'll see you on the other side. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been very insightful.